Hello all my beautiful sisters from those other misters. Welcome back to my channel. Today I am going to rank my 2021 beauty purchases in order from worst to best. Uh, I did this last year. I had a lot of fun with it and I wanted to do it again this year. Sometimes it's actually nice to gather everything together in one go and see how much I purchased in a year um, it, it kind of helps me to you know have feelings <laughs> about it and I I feel actually pretty good about my purchases this year looking at everything um, I feel like there's so many more wins than there are shitty ass products so without further ado because I think this video might be long I'm going to take you through my 2021 purchases, beauty purchases, and I'm going to rank them from worst to best. We're going to start with worst, but I will just mention I don't have my December items in this video. I have made a note in my diary for next year's video in this series um, to include my December purchases because I am filming this a little bit early, just so I'm under less pressure with the filming and the editing in the lead up to actual Christmas. <laughs> so let's start. Um, Fenty. Fenty Skin is my worst purchase for the year, unfortunately. I purchased um, basically a full routine. I purchased the cleanser, the toner, day moisturizer, night moisturizer, and the eye cream. Now, I can't find the cleanser. Did I finish it? I might have finished it. Or it's somewhere. I don't know. I can't find it. Oh, wait. Is it in here? Found it. Found it. It was in my uh, samples to pan in 2022 tub. So there you go. Sneak peek of what's coming next year. Um, I'm actually going to throw all of these minis in there. I don't know what I'm going to do with this. This one I'm already working on. So we'll get to it. Um, my issue with this range was... Okay, so... For starters, I purchased this stuff because I was curious. There are some items from Fenty that I really, really enjoy. There are some that I'm not that into, but when they released skincare, I thought, you know what? I want to try this out. I want to see what it's like. Um, they were touting that this was, you know, anti-aging and skin perfecting and la 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 la. Um, and I wanted to try it. I did a bit of research prior to purchasing these and the ingredients that they were saying did these wonderful things to your skin I was like eh, eh. I mean you know yeah but also nah <laughs> um then they're not the sort of actives that I usually go for I you know 37 over here um, when I'm using anti-aging skincare or buying anti-aging skincare, I'm looking for things that are like clinically proven and um, there's a reason why they're used so widely in so many skincare ranges. With this stuff, it was a bit more like, uh, not anecdotal evidence, there is evidence that it, it can be beneficial for the skin, but not in the way that you might see if you uh, do a deep dive into retinols or um, AHAs, stuff like that. So, you know, uh, my expectations were sort of middle ground. I was hoping they'd be nice, um, but I wasn't expecting miracles. Now, what I didn't realize was the moisturizers were going to break me out. So, I mean, that's an issue in itself. Um, I could wear them for a little while, but after a few days, I started to get some, it looked like congestion breakouts. So they kind of went to the wayside. The fat water, which is a hydrating toner, I didn't mind it. It was, you know, nice. And I, I think the name fat toner works well for this product because it does have a bit of a thicker viscosity to it, which is kind of cool. The eye cream, bleh. Like, it's, I just felt like it was a nothing product. I've actually been um, using this on my feet. 
<laughs> so that should be finished up very soon. <laughs> Lie on my feet. I don't know. Just because I wanted a, an easy way to use it up, I would. I wasn't going to use it on my face. Um, I don't see the point in using it on my body. I just put it on my feet before I go to bed. The cleanser. I remember. I think I liked this one as well. Um, I definitely liked the packaging. So it's got this like twist bottom. You squeeze it out, and then you can twist it close again, which is really cool. Um, I'm. <sighs> I wouldn't buy any more Fenty skincare. My curiosity has been, you know, um, dealt with. And I, I'm no longer, you know, I've tried it. And now I'm, I know it's, it's not for me. I'm, I'm not interested. Um, I definitely want to try and work on panning this cream next year. I might try to use it up on my body maybe. I think the eye cream will be gone soon. And these three, I originally had the cleanser in my sample thing, but um, I think I'll put them all in my sample tub to pan next year. Um, the moisturizer, I think I will just, it's an SPF 15 moisturizer. I might try to like use it um, intermittently in my routine just to finish it up. It's only a 30 mil tube, it shouldn't take too long. The next item is from Marc Jacobs. It is the Extra Shot uh, Foundation and Caffeine Concealer and Foundation. So I purchased these when Marc Jacobs had their nice big 50% off sale um, because I was curious. The, it sounded, the description of the product sounded nice and I thought, you know what, I want to try it. So I did pick it up in two shades because I wasn't too sure what was going to work for me. I got 140 light and 150 light. Okay, very good. I've used this a few times. I've been trying to play with it recently to sort of get a vibe for like, do I like this product? I don't think I like this product. Here's some swatches. That's 140, that's 150. Here's my issue, right? So when I buy something and I use it and I'm not immediately like, oh my God, I love it. I like to give the product a bit of a go because sometimes after extended use or like, um, you know, playing with different moisturizers or different powders or whatever, whatever it might be. Sometimes you find something that like just works and makes the product really shine. Um, so I've been trying to do that with this product, but I think I'm getting to the point with it now where I'm just like, this is just not it for me and I'm never going to love it. Um, it's on the bottom of my list because it's just... I don't know. The way that it goes on the skin, it's quite paint-like and it's, um, I feel like it looks very heavy. It's got good coverage, which is great. I love that. But it also, like the way that it sits on the skin, it sits on the skin. I think that's like the main thing that I don't like about it. Um, it never seems to become one with the skin. So the Marc Jacobs extra shot, whatever, whatever. I don't, I don't, I don't really love it. It is currently in my like, you know, um, group of products to test out a bit further um, in the new year. And I look, I think it's most likely gonna go. At this point, I don't like it. And it's not, it's not even something that I want to like force myself to pan. There are a few things that I want to do with it. Uh, I really, with products like this that can be a bit paint-like, um, I enjoy mixing them with other products. So that's pretty much the last thing that I want to do with this to see if I can get use out of it because I hate wasting product before you get in the comments and be like just get rid of it i don't like to waste product i don't i don't like to waste anything it's, it makes me feel bad about being a human so if i can find a way to use it i want to but like i mean we're we're teetering on the edge here the edge of i think i have to declutter this so that is why it is on the bottom of my list something else that i just it's not, it's not, it's not very good. Uh, it's this stuff. It's from Color Me Pretty. 
it is the builder gel brush on builder now i bought how many of these did i buy one two three four so i bought four of these hoping and praying that they would be the second coming of jesus and exactly what i was looking for i was looking for a nude or many nude versions of this stuff which is the ibd building gel now that is a product that has been a staple in my nail routine for quite a few years now i love it it is one of the absolute best nail products that i've ever used and i'm obsessed with it but i really really wanted nude versions not pink versions i already bought that we'll talk about it soon um i wanted actual nude versions so like a cool tone nude a neutral nude a warm nude the nudes a movie nude all that jazz um so i went on a hunt for them and i was like i'm gonna start with some of the more affordable uh products and the color me pretty ones were fairly affordable now these are brush on building gels that are also soak off i i only want to soak off i'm not a nail professional and there is no way in hell that i am going to be filing off a builder gel that's not a soak off i would ruin my nails i just know i would so i've been on a hunt for these soak off building gels now this range has the colors that i wanted it was like it was eaten a bit i was like yes i found it i'm oh, you're so, so excited um and i bought them and i tried them the problem is they're not like they don't set like a hard gel these are kind of like if a hard gel or like a builder gel and a gel colored polish made a baby it's this they're too soft these are too soft i i put these on one night and everything was great they're all set you know you set them under a, a lamp and all that jazz and i went to bed and it was a warm night and when i woke up in the morning i was kind of like you know all sort of wrapped up and a little bit like on my front almost and one of my hands was sort of tucked under my body and um i you know <laughs> woke up and i was sitting up in bed and i noticed that one of my nails was sort of like pointing up and i was like the fuck has happened here and i realized that the builder gel was like all soft and pliable like i could i could bend it so these don't set hard these are not what i need them to be um they might be okay as just like you know if you want a nude colored base with it a little bit of um added support for the nail but this isn't what i'm looking for in a builder gel so i would not buy any more of these i will most likely next year i will most likely test out every single shade and um just keep one or two as like just a nude gel nail polish basically because of the, i this i don't classify this as a builder gel if you ask me especially not when i'm comparing it to my holy grail product that is also a builder gel so there's that the next item on my list is the Luna Beauty Moon Spell Volume 2 palette. Now, I do not know what I've done with this palette. I cannot find it for the life of me. It's not in my declutter drawer. I'm wondering if potentially I gave it to someone and I just don't remember. Um, it's not in any of my makeup drawers. It's not in my bedroom. So, I don't know what I did with it. I was originally i was thinking maybe i should sell it um i definitely didn't sell it i just don't i have no idea what i've done with it no idea um and i don't really care there's a reason why it's in the fourth position on this list to be it, it actually probably would have been like vying for like last position or for like first 
cab off the rank with the crappy products uh, next to Fenty if uh, if I had it here. I don't want to give you guys the wrong impression that the palette is bad because that's not actually the case. The formula is good. The issue is literally me. I shouldn't have purchased that palette. It was stupid. I purchased it because I thought, oh, I'll review it. And it's very Haley color story kind of. I mean, it's not what I would consider. Uh, okay, so red and purple, love those shades together. Um, it's not what I would consider a good red and purple palette visually, but I thought, mm, you know, maybe, maybe I'll like it. Maybe it'll be good. So I purchased it to review it. And when I received it, I was like, God, this is even more uninspiring seeing it in person than it, it was on seeing it on Instagram. So I wish I hadn't purchased that palette because it was such a waste of money. If it was here now, I, I would stick it in the declutter drawer, but I, I have no idea. I don't know what I've done with it. No idea, but yeah, not interested in that palette. Um, yeah, I just, no. thing I have here is this guy. It's from Illamasqua. My dog has had a chew on this, which is not surprising. Um, it is the Hydra Lip Tint in Banoffee. So this was the range that they did where it was like two-toned color. Uh, and basically when you apply it, it turns into, you know, a, a different color. I'm going to apply it now. Um, a reason why this is so low on my list is because they call it a Hydra Hydra lip tint and I just really do not think that it's very hydrating at all to be honest. Another issue that I have with this other than it not being very moisturizing is mine is quite wobbly right now here's the thing about this product and I, re I reckon that the the packaging on this just it's not right for this type of product. This would have been better in like a long skinny stick with potentially just like a click up um, applicator. This is quite a firm formula, right? So to get it on the lips, you have to do, as you saw me apply it, lots of the back and forth. Doing the back and forth gets an ample amount of product on the lips and it also blends the color nicely. So you get a really nice application a beautiful color am I right like I love the color um, but in doing that you're getting a lot of movement in the bullet so eventually this is gonna break I know it is I'm fucking I would put I'd put 200 bucks on this breaking in a couple of months if I used it regularly probably a couple of weeks I'm not even kidding if this was in a thinner more supported um, tube applicator you would have less likely chance of this breaking it would also allow for a smaller tip which means more precise application this flat thing here i'm like okay okay lip balm from chemist warehouse i like illamasqua but some of their stuff i'm just like Oh, it's 2021. It's the end of 20. It's nearly 2022. Get with the times. Like, innovate your packaging. It will. It will help. Next up is the Ameli. Ameli. Oh, I don't fucking know. Always struggle with the name of this crap. Um, it's a builder base off Amazon. I purchased these off Amazon. So it comes in a pack of like 60 for four dollars. Um, that's an exaggeration, but you get the point. Large amount of product, very cheap price. Now, the reason why I purchased these was, okay, whenever I talk about the IBD building gel and how much I love it and adore it and it's changed my life, the most common comment that I get is either, I can't find that product where I live, or I need a cheaper alternative which is totally fair. If you can't find it, but you want to try something like, uh, you know, I get it. You want an alternative. If you can't afford this, I also get it. You want an alternative. So I went on a hunt for cheaper and easier to find alternatives. The reason why I purchased this set was because it was very affordable and they were meant to be colored, 
nude coloured, a whole pack of them. I was like, oh my god, jackpot! This is going to be amazing. Turns out that they are not that amazing. Now, there is one redeeming feature about these, but also there's a lot of fail features. Now, when they say that these are tinted or coloured, coloured, they say, they're tinted, they are so sheer that if you put these on all next to each other, they all look like the same colour. They are so, so sheer. You need to put on about five coats before you start to see the colour differences. And by then you've got a nail that's like this thick, a bubble nail, basically. Nobody wants that. Now, they are soak off, which is great. And they are, like, they're firm. They're great, just like a hard gel. Same as the IBD, which is absolutely amazing. That's the whole point of them they're meant to be strong you're meant to be able to create like a whole fake nail with them or wear them over the natural nail to support and strengthen the natural nail the issue besides the shitty tinted coloring is these are very difficult to remove like really difficult um soaking them off keeping the warm Mm, it just not they don't remove easily or nicely and I feel like I ugh, look I would say if you wanted to buy these like if that's all your budget allows and you're like I don't give a shit about the color I just want like a good hard gel soak off and this is within my budget and you know I want to try them anyway I would just say when you, it comes to removing them you have to be prepared to be motherfucking patient because you can fuck your nails up if you don't get this right um I wouldn't buy these again I again I'm gonna go through them um, same as the Colour Me Pretty ones next year I'll have a play with them I might end up just decluttering all of these and uh, going on to try some other brands to see if I can find some more alternatives so yeah these look I in some aspects I do like these in others I don't okay and I, I feel like what I just said in some aspects I like these in others I don't that is sort of what we're getting to with the the next group of products so next on my list is the toucha silk powder so i purchased this because i really listen toucha it's one of those brands it just gets me gets me every time i love the idea of toucha but i have to admit that most products that I've tried from Tatcha are just okay. I think um, there are some skincare items that I like, but they're not magical. There are, like, the, the lip products, I like them. But again, if I'm completely frank about it, I do think that they're quite overpriced. It, to me, that's like a, if you want a treat, if you want a bougie treat, go buy yourself that. Um, I bought, like, a little holiday pack last year which I you know I love it I I love the idea of Tatcha I love the packaging I love their signature scent all that jazz so I'm not gonna stop buying Tatcha but my expectations of when I'm purchasing Tatcha and what I'm getting it's like I've got a baseline that's a bit realistic with the powder I was hoping it would be lovely but I mean I just don't think it's all that lovely I haven't tried it enough to really have a strong, strong sense of like, no, I don't like this or yeah, I do actually like it. I am in the middle with this. I think I just expected it to be like a really beautiful blurring powder that like, and I mean, when I put it on like this, that is how it looked kind of like a radiance powder and that's what it, it's meant to be so it is a radiant translucent setting powder and it does it has that sort of like soft radiance to it it feels lovely on the skin but when I put it on the face there's something about it that just looks not that great potentially that's just my dry ass skin could very well be I'm sure there are people that love this but I am on the fence about it. This is definitely not up there with my best purchases of the year, but it's not my worst. Not by far, it's not my worst. Sally Hansen. Okay, this is an instant nail polish remover. 
Now, I had one of these, I received it in PR, and it was the um, acetone version. So it was the nail polish remover with acetone in it. Now, because I wear nail enhancements that are so cough, you might be able to understand that it doesn't really work for me. So when I finished that one up, I went and purchased, my, purchased myself the acetone free version. And these are great because it has a sponge inside with the nail polish remover. You stick your nail in there, you give it a little whoosh, whoosh. <laughs> what's that? And uh, then the nail polish is off your nails. Let's say you're doing your nails and you nick one and you're like, well, I can't just paint over that. That's balked. I'm just going to fix that one nail. If you've ever tried to do that with like a cotton pad, you'll know that quite often you then fuck up your other nails. So I love the idea of this. It's fantastic. However, I don't like this acetone free version very much. It works. It definitely removes nail polish well. And I also don't think it uh, lifts my enhancements as much as the, well, I don't think it lifts my enhancements at all, to be fair. Um, I think it's like the formula is good in that way. But my god, it stinks. It smells so bad. Like the most intense vinegary smell. It's, it's, like, it's like you took a bottle of vinegar and just fucking fling it around the room. So I don't like that. Also, what I've noticed is the sponge on the... I feel like the sponge is degrading. I feel like it's kind of, have you ever used a, uh, like a beauty blender or other um, makeup application sponge for so long that eventually like when you start to squeeze it, it doesn't expand again. It sort of like crumples in on itself and it's just like, Ugh. that's when you know a sponge is super fucked. Uh, that, I feel like that's what this is doing. It looks like it's just sort of like shrinking in on itself. And I, I would say that that is something to do with the acetone free formula. There's probably something in here that um, doesn't degrade nail enhancements, but <laughs> degrades uh, sponges. Yeah, I wouldn't buy this again. I wouldn't. What I am going to do though is uh, when this one's finished up, like I'll finish it up, I'm going to go out and buy me some sponges and I'm just going to use my normal uh, acetone free nail polish remover that I buy from the trade store because uh, I think that I think that's the solution that I'm looking for but this doesn't go right down the bottom of the list with the things that I thought were crappy I love the technology behind this and I mean let's face it it's a sponge in a bottle and <laughs> this shit is not groundbreaking but it works and I love it and I'll never go back basically I will just keep reusing the packaging though Oh, Kali Dol Kali, let's talk about the next item. This is from Ikea. <laughs> it's a candle. It is the Vinta 2021 candle. So this is uh, like their pine scented Christmas candle. I really love the scent. It's delicious and it does remind me of Christmas. Um, but my issue and the reason why this isn't right up the top of the list is that I actually don't think the scent throw is very good. I will look, I'm, I'm ruined. I am definitely ruined by glass house. I will always compare the scent of a candle to what I remember glass house being like. I do feel that they have changed in recent years, but we won't get into that. I like this, but the scent throw isn't great. So I wouldn't buy it again. Um, I have had, Quite a few people leave comments on my video when I originally talked about this in my purchases video for November, I think it was, um, saying that they loved the out the loved the IKEA candles. They were fantastic, especially for the price. I do wonder if potentially um, some candles have better scent throw than others. I don't know. If you guys have used this one and other ones, and you have something to compare it to feel free to chime in in the comments I have only ever tried this one I would give another one a go in the future but I probably wouldn't buy this one again I would be more inclined to go on the hunt for a different brand that makes like a pine scented candle and you know try that out instead but the the little 
jar is nice and reusable the smell is great I can you know light this and sit at my desk and I can smell it but it doesn't fill my whole room and that's that's exactly what I want out of a scented candle otherwise what's the point I don't care enough about the ambiance um well I do I do like ambiance from a burning candle but the point is I'm here for the scent Next cab off the rank, we have some Davinez products. Now, I got these not too long ago, um, and I have only used them a few times. I think this is a new range to Davinez, um, and these are designed for scalps that are unhappy. So, oh, and also, I mean, this one is designed for, you know, sort of... Um, the experience scalp massage so this is a massage oil for scalp and hands and this is an elevating scalp recovery treatment which is a restoring scalp treatment for dry sensitive scalp some of you will remember just a few months ago all i could bloody talk about was how dry my scalp was how flaky my scalp was how just pathetic and annoying my scalp was because it was so dry. I had the worst dandruff ever. I don't even know if it's dandruff. Like, I, I'm not a hairdresser. I don't know the technicalities of what, like, technically what is dandruff. But what I was experiencing was my whole body was extremely dry throughout the winter period and just, like, shedding skin like a snake. Um, now, on my face and my body, it's a bit easier to manage because I can moisturize regularly. I can moisturize several times a day. I can get in the shower and I can scrub off the dead skin. Like, that's not an issue. But on my scalp? No, ma'am. Different story. I can't put moisturizer on my scalp every morning and every night and sometimes during the middle of the day because then I will just have a head full of moisturizer it doesn't work um when it comes to using like oils on the scalp again you you put a oil on the scalp and <laughs> you got oily greasy roots i'm not trying to get around in life looking like i haven't washed my hair in three weeks so i really really struggled and exfoliating your scalp properly like it's hard. It is, it's a, a one hour endeavor before you get in the shower where you're just like, okay, let me get in there. Scrubby, 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 scrubby. Separate the hair, scrubby. Oh my God. Like how much of my life did I fucking waste through winter trying to get the dead dry skin off my scalp? It was a nightmare. It was an absolute nightmare. Like it stressed me out and I tried so many products but if it happens this winter I already I think I know how to fix it but we'll get to it anyway that's where these guys come in this is where I purchase them and another product which I will talk about later comes a little bit later in the video now these two are in this position because the scalp recovery treatment i never even got around to using it i fixed the issue before i felt the need to use this so it goes in this position as a not too sure not too sure position but also i have hopes that it's going to be quite good based on the other products that i have used in this range that is designed to help hydrate and repair the scalp this one is the elevating massage oil now this definitely helps this helps to hydrate the hair you put this in dry hair or you can put it in wet hair if you want um, and you literally use it to like rehydrate and massage it into the scalp you then jump in the shower and you wash it out now this is not high higher up on my list because it is meant to be a um, emulsifying oil and it does emulsify, like if you put it on your hands and then go emulsify it underwater, you can see that it emulsifies. The problem is it doesn't emulsify out of the hair. You have to like actively shampoo this out. And I had to shampoo it twice to properly get it out. So I feel like this is a bit of a one step forward, two step back kind of product. However, with extended use, 
I did see improvement. So I feel like if my if my dry scalp issues come back next winter, this is going to be something that I use before every single wash. And to be honest, when um, autumn starts to roll in, I might just start using it as a preventative treatment. It does have its benefits, but it's not absolute perfection. I was kind of hoping this would be something that I put in. It emulsifies completely. Then I can just do a light shampoo. I can condition and go on with my life, but I can't really get away with that. It weighs down my roots too much. I definitely have to do a double cleanse um, and then, you know, go in with the um, conditioner. So there's that. However, the product that did actually help my hair I didn't purchase it, so it's not in this video, but it was gifted to me from Madeline. Davenez have a new curl range, and they have, uh, well, I don't know if it's new. Yeah, it's new. I think it came out, was it earlier this year or late last year? I'm not sure, but like it's new-ish. Um, and they have a, like a curl cleanser that's not a shampoo, so it's kind of like a conditioner cleanser. I used that it's amazing it really helped like really 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 helped problem is it weighs down my hair like nobody's business so uh, I know how to tackle my dry scalp issues if they rear their ugly head again it'll be uh, you know combined effort but um, there was no solution that was like the perfect solution it was kind of like I had to do a bunch of things at once to make everything work Let's talk about some more nail things. This guy is Sally Hansen Instant Cuticle Remover. Now, I have been sort of struggling along using a cuticle remover that I hated, and I decided enough was enough. I was going to go and purchase my favorite cuticle remover. Um, and that was the, I think it was Sally Hansen as well. It was a 24 karat gold cuticle remover. It came in a pen and it had like a squeezy sort of applicator. Oh, excuse me, ma'am. Please do not knock things over. Oh dear. Yeah, there you go. Nice safe spot. Have a little nap. Um, anyway, I think it's been discontinued. Why? It was amazing. And I don't know, like, this has the same viscosity, but the um, the 24 karat gold one had these little, it was almost like exfoliating gritty bits in it. And I just love that stuff. It worked so well. So I thought, you know what, I'll buy this, I'll try it out. Now, I don't mind it. I think there is a really good chance that these could be, like, the same um sort of base type product but then they've put something else in the um the original one that i liked uh so this does work it does work and i don't hate it um but i don't think it's something i would repurchase i think i'd be more inclined to try another one so if you are a nail tech um in australia because uh, what I'm about to say will probably only pertain to people in Australia. Uh, if you're a nail tech and you buy a pro product that is just like the absolute fucking bee's knees for um, cuticle softening and removing, please let me know what it is because I do have access to um, pro nail products through the beauty trade stores. And yeah, I think I, I'd like to try, potentially try something new next time um or if you are just a nail junkie and you found your holy grail um cuticle removing product in just a normal retail store i am all ears with that as well i just kind of have it in my mind that a pro product would probably be like where it's at in terms of um something that is super effective so yeah but in saying that i do like this product and I, th I don't think I will have any issues finishing it. I mean, it's 30 mil, so it's going to take me a while. Um, it definitely works. It gets the job done. But I, it also, like, you got to let it soak for a little while. And, yeah, you know, I want something that's a bit more um, get the job done quicker, you know, because it takes a long time. Soak off the nails, prep the nail bed, like, takes forever. 
is a gel. It's like an all day gel. Next product is also a nail product. This is the IBD building gel in cover pink. Now, I was running out of my normal IBD building gel. This is my holy grail product. This is what allows me to grow my nails this long. This is what allows me to... Some of these nails are like built from this because I broke the natural nail and rather than cutting down all of my other nails and losing all of my growth progress over the last 5,000 years in lockdown, um, I just build a nail and you know they last this stuff is the best um so i went to the beauty trade store where i buy this stuff and in my head i was like i'm gonna get the cover pink version and i'm gonna get the clear version now they didn't have cover pink they had the clear one so i picked that up um and this sort of stayed on my mind i still really wanted to try it i wanted to see what it would look like on the nail so I jumped on Amazon and I purchased it. And it's the real deal. This isn't a fake. I, you, it's blatantly obvious by the way that it applies, performs, looks, smells, all that jazz. Um, I really like this, but what I really, really, really wanted was a nude version. And it's just not. I mean, it's pink. You know, I, I'm not going to lie. I am surprised in this day and age and if you're a nail tech like feel free to weigh in on this i am surprised that we're not seeing more brands like ibd who are like renowned for making these amazing professional products um i'm surprised that they're not getting more into slightly different colors of this like slightly different nude colors of this uh, cover pink and they do it in sheer pink as well and they do it in white I understand why because that's like the traditional colors that would, you would use for doing a French manicure which is just iconic like it will never go out of style in the nail world um, and also this color mimics the color of the base of your nail I get why it is what it is but I am surprised that they're not like you know, expanding their color ranges. And I see it with other brands, but they're more like, um, one that comes to mind is uh, Nao Nails. I'm pretty sure they have a builder gel. I haven't tried it. I don't know if it's good, but they do it in like different nude colors. I think I might try that in the new year. I have to check their shipping, whether they even ship to Australia, but yeah. So I'm seeing it, but I'm not seeing it from the big brands, which I think is interesting. And if you're a nail tech and you, you want to weigh in on that, if you want to have a discussion about it, uh, go for it. I'm all ears. Next up is the Marc Jacobs Terrific Palette. So this is the only other palette that I purchased this year, which is awesome. Now I, okay, I purchased this because it was on sale. And because I really wanted to try the Marc Jacobs eyeshadow formula and I thought that like there was rumors Marc Jacobs was shutting down and I thought fuck it I'm buying this um and also I really liked the color story of this particular palette so I picked it up and when I first used it I was a bit like what this is not what I was expecting I think I had um, expectations that this would be quite rich and punchy people like based on what I'd seen people spoke very highly of these eyeshadows and I assumed that they would just be like really vibrant and rich um, but it turns out that they're actually quite soft and, uh, and initially I was a bit like I, not disappointed maybe just like uh, well they weren't what I expected so I was a bit thrown off, but after using it more, I think I am actually really happy that these aren't super rich and super pigmented and intense because that's actually not what I go for these days. I go for a more soft, um, easy to wear eyeshadow. So I feel like this is a little bit of a case of not getting what I expected, but getting what I needed. I do like this palette. I think it's nice. Um, there's a decent blend of like mattes and shimmery shades. You've got four mattes, three shimmery shades. I don't think it's absolutely perfect, but I I like it. I like the, the packaging. I think it's really cute. I'm happy to have tried it. I'm not sure that I would necessarily go like running out to buy more Marc Jacobs 
eyeshadow palettes. Also, never say never because I do like their formula. And if they came out with a color story that was spot on for me, I would potentially buy another one in the future. Okay, continuing on. I have another hair product. I think this is, yep, my last hair product. This is, again, it's Davines. I mean, what can I say? I love them. Uh, this is the Natural Tech Purifying Shampoo. So it's a shampoo for scalp with oily or dry dandruff. Me. Again, this was one that was recommended by Madeline and um, I got it along with the other two Davines products that you saw earlier. This was something that kind of, it made me feel like I was still getting the clean that I needed uh, without uh, weighing down my hair, which was that was the hardest thing um, when I was dealing with my scalp issues. I always felt like I was taking one step forward, two steps back, and I was worried about like dehydrating my scalp further, you know, using shampoo. It, you know, if you're not putting moisture back in, but you're taking it out, you are fucking shit up. Um, so this helped because it does help to like um, hydrate the scalp a little bit but also clean the hair effectively so i wasn't just left with greasy looking hair i really like this stuff i totally get it again in the future i'm sort of holding off using this at the moment because my scalp is more balanced out i definitely think that it was um weather related i just like once i sort of balanced my scalp out and that sort of happened um at like the start of spring and then obviously the weather starts to improve it's not as cold my skin's not as dry and it was just i honestly think it's weather related for me now so there's that my skin always used to get more dry in winter and more oily in summer and then i went on isotretinoin and i feel like it was um now in summer i'm normal and in winter, I'm super dry. So, I mean, if that's my life now, that's my life now. It is what it is. But it did take me some time to work out uh, how to deal with that dryness because it was it was certainly a thing. It was worse than when I was on isotretin. No, and I'm just putting it out there. Um, this was really nice. I re Look, I really like Davinia's products. Sometimes I'm like, oh, God, I talk about them so often. People are going to be sick of me. But... I think they're fantastic. They're effective. If you can find the range that your hair needs, it's great. It's fantastic. And sometimes it does take a little while of like playing around and finding the, the thing that ticks the box. And that's what happened to me. And that's fine. I, you know, I've experienced that in the past with hair products. So I'm prepared to go through that. But this was one that I really, really enjoyed. All right, we're about to do a bunch of lip products. And these kind of all come together because I liked them all. Um, these are from M Cosmetics. They are the Lip Cushion Tinted Lip Luminizers. I picked up two. I got Venetian Rose and I got Faded Clementine because, you know, of course I did. Of course I had to. So Faded Clementine is a really beautiful orangey tone. And um, Venetian Rose is really beautiful rosy tone. I mean, is anyone surprised? No. These are really nice. I enjoy them. I do think that they're um, more pigmented than I thought they would be. But that is not like a bad thing. They're beautiful and glossy. Nice and hydrating. Super comfortable to wear. It's almost like a, um, a gloss in a stick. And I really like those ones. Um, same as these. These are from Lisa Eldridge. They are the uh, Gloss Affair. Wait, what were they called? So they're the Gloss Embrace in Affair and Muse. So Affair was actually the one that I was wearing at the start of the video. I'm still wearing it, but as you can see, they do wear off as you talk. Um... This one is a really beautiful, like, warm-toned nude. I really enjoy it. The formula of these is very smooth and, like, feels silky on the lips. They've got a nice gloss finish without being, like, gloopy and they're not sticky. I really enjoy these. If she brought out more nude shades, I would consider buying some. These were the only two that I was really, like, drawn to. I'll actually swatch them next to each other because they look fairly similar um, in the the tube 
and one is as you can tell like it's a warm nude and the other one is a bit more of like a mauvey shade which you can see in the tube but uh, it's always better to see swatches so this is the warm nude uh, which is uh, a fair and muse is the sort of mauvey shade um, which I would actually say oh my god it looks so similar to Venetian Rose just putting it out there but they're nice I, I really enjoy them um, I wanted to try Lisa Eldridge makeup this year I got to do it um, I, I'm considering buying her foundation maybe but also I'm thinking I kind of want to pan a few before I buy one so um maybe 2022 won't be the year that i buy foundations but you know we'll get there we'll get there um mark jacobs so i finally finally purchased one of the enamored gloss sticks this was a shade that i wanted it is mocha chocolata now i have actually been in sephora countless times over the years since these released and I've tried to purchase them. Uh, this shade is absolutely always out of stock. I feel like I've just shown you the same lip shade like 20 times over with everything that I purchased. We're not surprised. I know what lip colors I enjoy and when I'm buying them I tend to buy the same colors over and over. It's a thing. Um, so I got this 50% off. I was super pleased to have one to try it. I don't know what's happening with Marc Jacobs at the moment. I haven't, like, looked into them. So I don't know if... I don't know. I don't know. It's not super important. The, the point is, I really wanted to try one of these ever since they released. They're beautiful lip products. Um, I know that we featured one on an episode of The Makeup Breakup. And even, like, since then, I've been like, oh, my God, I've got to get one one day. But this was always the one that I wanted. And the others, like... They were colours that weren't really something that I knew I would want to wear or that were shimmery and I was like, it's just not what I want. I want this one um, and they had it in stock and I got it and I am happy to have it. It's a beautiful lip product. More Lisa Eldridge. Uh, so this here is the Seamless Skin Enlivening Blush in the shade Pink Soap. Now, I'm going to get the problem with this product out the way first, and that is this bloody packaging. It, I don't like the packaging. The product inside, it's kind of like, um, it's like a, a mousse, sort of, like a creamy mousse. When you, like, blend it out like this, it becomes nice and thin and, you know, blend super easily but when you're trying to squeeze it out of that tube it's like trying to i don't know squeeze a brick out of a tiny little hole it's difficult so that's an issue i i don't really know what packaging would be better for i feel like a squeezy tube is the right packaging for this formula but i feel like in my head, I'm like, the solution is to make the, the hole bigger, but then it might come out too quickly and it would dispense too much product. So, I don't know. Maybe an airless pump would be better. I think I've thought about that before and maybe mentioned it. An airless pump that is like a long skinny one that just dispenses like the tiniest amount of product, that might work better. But yeah, this tube, I'm not a super fan. Now, I will say... The colour of this is not my absolute favourite. I watched her video um, when she was releasing these and to me they all look, I was like, they're all going to be pink on me. But this one looked to be the colour that would probably suit my skin tone the best. So I picked it up and I've got to say, yeah, it's pink and I'm not a huge fan of pink blush and, you know, uh, I've got, uh, there's history there. Um, but this product does look really beautiful on the skin and I really, really, really enjoy it. And I'm sure that she will release more shades in the future and there is a really good chance that I would consider picking up another one. The way they look on the skin is absolutely beautiful and I feel like they go over a set base 
fairly well as well. So this was a winner from this year. I really enjoyed it. And I was super happy to have tried Lisa Eldridge products. Another thing I picked up was this guy. Now this is the Hourglass Caution Extreme Lash Mascara. I haven't opened this one yet. I'm using a mini of it at the moment. But there was something that I wanted to purchase from Hourglass, which we will see later in the video. Um, and I purchased this, I think, to hit like a free shipping cap. I love this mascara. That's all great. Good things. I'm... I have no regrets purchasing it and I look forward to the day that I crack it open. I really love it. Now, uh, something I do want to talk about is, did you know that Mecca, <laughs> Mecca is the Australian retailer for Hourglass and they have an exclusivity contract and they sued Hourglass because during lockdown, Hourglass started shipping to Australia from their website, which is where I got another product that I'll talk about soon. Um, and Mecca were like, no, 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 we have exclusivity in Australia. You cannot ship your products here. And Mecca won. They won. So there you go. Um, I have feelings about that, <laughs> but whatevs. It, I mean, it is what it is. They had a contract and Mecca won. So there's that. Um, all right, moving on to the next thing. It's a big thing. Lashify. Lashify. Maybe this shouldn't be so high up on the list, but it is, and I will try to explain myself. So I actually purchased this quite a while ago, and oh, I haven't used it yet because I just, I've not had time, guys. I've been doing Vlogmas and, oh, honey, I have not had time. I have not had time. Um, I bought myself a Lashify, I believe they're called a control kit. So it's like the, um, the starter kit. And I am so excited to use this. This is kind of like... I'm sure you've all heard of Lashify by now, but it if you haven't, it's kind of like if lash extensions and false lashes had a baby and became a consumer product, you get Lashify. Um, so these, you wear them um, instead of on top of the lashes, you wear them under the lashes. And if they are applied properly and in a specific type of way, you're supposed to be able to wear them for like a few days, as far as I'm aware. Now, the reason why this is quite high in the list is probably because of the excitement that this brings me. I am going to test these out. I'm going to do a, a review on them, um, but it's not going to happen until January. I just, I know it. I'll do the testing throughout January and then maybe it'll be end of Jan or early Feb. Um, but I'm really excited to see what this product is like. I know that in the makeup artist community, like the professional makeup artist community, this is starting to get some traction. Or to be fair, it's been getting some traction for quite some time, if I'm perfectly honest. Um, I tried to ignore it for a really long time, but I feel like I no longer can because um, when I see makeup artists that I love and respect being like, holy shit, have you tried the Lashify? Um, it's really hard for me to be like, no, I'm not trying the Lashify. <laughs> um, so I bought the Lashify. I'm going to try the Lashify. If I fall in love with the Lashify, then cool. It is what it is. Maybe I will hate it. Maybe I will love it. Maybe I will be indifferent about it. We will, we will find out. I'm sorry if you feel like that's not a fair place to put the product, but it excites me and I'm very, very much looking forward to trying it. And if it upsets you that it's this high on the list, just pretend that it wasn't there and we'll go on to the next thing. Okay, the next thing is actually... <laughs> <laughs> you might think this is boring as bad shit. Are there eyeliners from Marc Jacobs? <laughs> so I have two of the fine liners here and I have one of the highliners. Now, uh, again, Marc Jacobs sale. I just bought like, you know, a bunch of things. I bought the highliner in blacker because this 
is one of like the best eyeliners that I've tried. The highliner in Black Art and NARS Via Veneto, Via Veneto are my favorite formulas of black eyeliners. And that is because on me, they stay put. They do not move. You put them on, you let them set, and that's it, done and dusted. Um, and I love that. So I like to use these to tight line, which is when you put the eyeliner on the, like the waterline on the upper lashes. And um, yeah, I only had a mini of the NARS Via Veneto and I thought, you know what, I'm going to pick up one of these while it's on sale because that's a good deal. Then I picked up two of the fine liners. Now, I really like these fine liners because they are skinny little mini babies and I love that. I love the control and precision. This formula is also kind of like a gel, a gel in a pencil form, which is really interesting. Super smooth, very opaque. Um, I picked up the last shade that was sort of on my wish list that I didn't own basically. I've already purchased a whole bunch of these um, and the shade was Grapevine and this is like a um, really beautiful, well it's a grape shade, a rich grape shade. So I picked up that one and I thought since they had it in stock I may as well grab one of these. It is a fine liner in blacker. So exact same product, same formula. It's just this one is in a super skinny applicator. So these are right up there on my list and not because they're like, you know, super exciting purchases. They're just, they're purchases that I, I felt like they were right for me. This formula works really well for me. I know not everyone likes a Marc Jacobs formula and that's like eyeliner and eye chemistry it's a legitimate thing it 110 percent is because you know some things work for others and or they work for one person not the other you know like it's legit um so yeah i really like those ones okay more pencils more pencils from natasha denono these are the i need a nude lip crayon so i picked up two shades i've got elona and noah so i basically got like a warm and a cool version um elona is like a oh you can't really see it there it looks like a nude it's a mauvey nude um, and Noah is like a warm brownie nude. So when you put them together, you can kind of see the nuances of the colors. These are so nice, guys. The formula of these is like silky smooth and just so pigmented. But when they set, they last forever. And being such like, like these are kind of universal lip shades you can put these on your lips and just wear them on their own you can pair them with pretty much any friggin lip color that you want um having a cool toned one and a warm toned one just makes them so diverse this is a banging formula i love this formula i am certainly not in the need of owning any more lip liners so you know uh, take what i'm about to say with a grain of salt i would buy more of these in the future there we go. More Fenty. Okay, so Fenty was right on the bottom of the list and now she's right up there on the list. Okay, this is the Cheeks Out Freestyle Cream Bronzer in the shade Amber. Now, it's not a bronzer. It's a contour shade. I really enjoy this product. It is just so nice. The color is so good for contouring. The formula is so smooth. This goes on bare skin. So if you want to put it under your foundation, like put it on a little bit heavy and then blend your foundation over the top. Absolutely beautifully because it's such a thin formula, but it has decent pigmentation. If you want to put it over your foundation, again, this does not mess up what you've already laid down. I haven't used this over a set base though, um, mostly because when you touch this, it thins down uh, with like the warmth of your hand. So that tells me, and also based on the, the finish of it, that tells me this has some oils in it. And I would say putting this over a set base would probably not be ideal. This is going to be best used under 
or over a foundation and then use like a translucent powder to set it and if you absolutely need to enhance it a little bit more you could go in with like a bronzer just to you know sort of lock it in even further this is such a beautiful formula i would actually like to try um one of the cream bronzers the actual like bronzing shades i've looked at the range before and i'm I vaguely remember thinking I'm not sure that there's really anything here for me but the contour shade is like outstanding and I have to try it this is a fantastic formula excellent product if you're looking for a cream contour and you have you know lighter fairer skin absolutely go for it um, this is great more bronzing products or in the I mean that's contour but in the realm of bronzing Marc Jacobs, yes I know, it's my last Marc Jacobs product. I bought a lot of Marc Jacobs, so like what can I say? Um, I like the, the brand. This is the Omega Bronzer in Tantastic. It's huge. It's so big. Um, this is 25 grams of bronzer that will last you probably a lifetime. Um, I really like this product. It is so beautiful and smooth. The way this applies on the skin is just divine this really does sort of mimic that sun-kissed glow color that you get when you're getting a tan um, I really love it the the formula being so smooth I really enjoy that because when I when my skin is dry and I've got I tend to get like little bits of flaky skin on my scalp and it doesn't matter what I do in terms of like moisturizing and exfoliating um, if a formula isn't super smooth or requires extra blending, um, it tends to stick and also make, you know, the skin worse because, you know, you're doing one of these and the skin is lifting even more, which just, like, it's just a nightmare. But when a formula is super smooth, you can do a quick dust, a gentle dust, and it doesn't require excessive blending and it doesn't like lift up even more of that dry flaky skin that just won't won't give up so i really like this i think it's a great product um 25 grams of bronzer i mean i personally think that's too much <laughs> i think like you know standard bronzer is usually about six to eight grams and if you use one regularly it's probably going to last you about i would say nine to twelve months um so 25 grams like what's the shelf life of this 12 months yeah nah you you're gonna have to commit to wearing that all over your body if you wanted to use that up in 12 months um i'm not that precious about my makeup so you know it doesn't bother me but i do think it's a little bit big but it's a beautiful product. Oh, here is some bougie skincare that I purchased. Sunday Riley Luna Oil. So this is a retinoid oil. And it also contains, I think it's blue tansy. Yeah, blue tansy and German chamomile essential oils. So this is an oil blend. It's a retinol. So it helps to, or retinoid, helps to um, improve the signs of aging. It also has the blue tansy in it and the chamomile. The chamomile is meant to soothe the skin. The blue tansy actually helps with redness. And yeah, this is great. If you get those like ruddy redness in your cheeks and you hate it, see if you can get a sample of this to try out. You would have to be wearing it for like, you know, uh, I'd say minimum two weeks before you're going to start to see results. But this product is so nice. So this is definitely a new love of mine and I would buy it again in the future. I do not use this every single night. I have um, some other retinol products that I use. Sometimes I choose an acid. I kind of, you know, I sprinkle different products into my routine. If I use this every night, I feel like I would probably go through it I mean, it's 35 mils. I only use a few drops. A little bit goes a long way. I would say two to three months, I'd probably finish this up and she's expensive. So, you know, I try not to use it 
every night but man when you do the results are beautiful this is one of those products that i almost regret falling in love with because now i feel like i can't live without it we've all been there we get it let's talk about some brushes um sonia g so these brushes are from the fusion series which she released earlier this year um and i believe there was four or five brushes in the range. I only picked up three because I didn't feel like I needed all of them. Um, there's a classic base, which is this one. Then we have the mini base, this one, and the soft concealer, this one. Now, there was one bigger than this. And was there another one bigger than this, like in between? Maybe I'll Google it. There was a jumbo base which was a step up, wait, a step up from this big guy, which isn't really big, it's a small one, but I'll talk more about it. Um, and then there was a jumbo concealer, which is um, a bigger one than this. So the jumbo concealer was a denser version of this uh, for building coverage with stiff creams. And the um, jumbo base was basically designed for foundation application now okay so much to say about Sonia G I love her brushes and I particularly love how she creates these brushes that are designed for creams and liquids now the reason why I feel like Sonia G sort of stands out from the crowd is and it look don't get me wrong other brands make good liquid and cream brushes as well but I think where she gets it just so right, her brushes create makeup application looks that are beautiful. When you are applying a foundation or a concealer with a brush that is like this from, let's just say a standard brand, right? Quite often those brushes like this one here, they're really dense, right? They're dense and they're not necessarily firm but they have a firmness to them because there are so many hairs packed into the ferrule that it doesn't allow for a lot of movement or softness whereas when you look at some of the Sonia G liquid and cream brushes they are densely packed but not as dense as some other brushes and like I mentioned there was a jumbo concealer which is a denser concealer brush and it's designed for applying more uh, stiff products or giving more coverage now sometimes when you're buying these like cream brushes if they're too dense when you pick up product you know pick it up off your palette or whatever and then put it onto the face it's like taking a paintbrush from Bunnings and trying to fucking paint ceiling paint over your face it just it's too much that it applies too much product and then you're struggling to blend it out and you're getting streaks because there's so much product on your face whereas these don't pick up so much product they disperse the product that is there really well and they don't leave streaks in the base and i just sonia g just gets it and look Hakuhodu gets it as well, but I didn't buy Hakuhodu this year. I bought Sonia G and Sonia G brushes fucking absolute bee's knees. Like, yes, 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 all of the yeses. I would 100% buy more Sonia G brushes in the future. To be honest, I will probably stick to her cream brushes because that's just like, mm, I feel like she's telling me a story of beautiful makeup application whenever I buy her brushes I'm just like yes Sonia I hear you yes I get it and I just I love them like I'm waxing lyrical about fucking makeup brushes you all probably think I'm absolutely crazy but you will probably also know that I am actually obsessed with makeup brushes okay something else that is oh, absolutely beautiful and coming from another queen who I think just understands makeup on a next level, Lisa Eldridge. This is the Elevated Glow. It's basically a, should we just call it a highlighter? Should we call it, we'll call it a liquid illuminator because highlighter is probably too general for what this product is capable of. 
So I have the shade Crystal Nebula. So this is whatever you want it to be essentially. It is a liquid highlighter. It is something that you can put under your base and use as a primer um, to like up the glow. You can mix this in with your foundation to up the glow and the hydration of the product. You could mix this with your moisturizer. You could put this stuff on your legs, on your body. I've done that. Put this on your collarbones. Mwah, gorgeous. It is, I, and I feel like these products are coming, becoming more popular. Um, another one that I think of is, um, oh, it's by Auric, the glow stuff that Samantha Ravendol makes with Auric. I can't remember the name of the product, but that's another one. It's like on my list. I'm like, I've got to try that brand one day. Um, this stuff is just so beautiful and diverse. I think like, again, this just makes me think like Lisa is telling me a story of, you know, like, think about all of the glowy possibilities and I'm like I hear you I there's not enough days in the year for me to try it with all of the things like I've put it on my breakfast um don't put it on your breakfast definitely don't eat your makeup it's weird uh, so yeah I just love that product I think it's divine I would like to get another shade maybe like I think there might be a shade up that's like a goldy color I don't know I think so I would like to get another one though because I really like it and I think it's beautiful on dry skin. I also like to just put this on when I'm not wearing anything else. I just put a little here, I put a little bit up here, a little bit on my brow bone and I just go, hey look at me, I have hydrated skin. I don't have hydrated skin, it's just something that makes me feel like I do, which makes me feel good inside and that is like the whole point of the makeup. Okay, Hourglass. This is my last Hourglass product. Yes, it is. So this is the reason why I purchased or made a purchase on the Hourglass website. It is the Illume Sheer Color Trio in Sunset. Makes I mean, if, if they give it a, a color name, makes me think that they'll bring out more. Now, this product actually came out years ago. And uh, it sold out and Hourglass didn't make any more. And that's because they were working on making it vegan. Now, I ever since, ever since I saw that thing, I regret not purchasing it. It was good that I didn't because it wouldn't have been suitable for my skin. I was oily skin. But now I'm not that girl. And when they said that they were bringing this out again, I was like, fuck yes, I am buying it. And I purchased it off the Hourglass website. But to be fair, I don't think it was on the Mecca website. So, you know, uh, your girl wants her makeup when she wants her makeup. She doesn't want to wait for your international, got to ship it over during a pandemic. Like, just, no ma'am, no, I, just, I want what I want when I want it. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds terrible. That sounds so fucking entitled. It is entitled. Like, I'm fully aware. Anyway, I wanted it. I got it. I really enjoy it. One thing that maybe is a little bit of a disappointment for me is uh, the highlighter. It's not as glowy as this bad boy, but it does have a place, to be fair. I think this is going for a more, like, natural glow. I just put it over the top of the Lisa Eldridge, so it's probably not fair. Um, it, yeah, it's more of, like, a natural sort of glowy highlight rather than a blingy, blinding highlight, which is fine. But also, when you put it on, it's almost like... It doesn't have um, the shine that I would expect from a cream product. It almost um, sets down to a powder finish. So it's not quite what I was expecting it to be. I'm so happy that I bought this, but I haven't played with it enough. I, whenever I do use it, I love it, but I also like I try to focus on project pan stuff and there's only so many days in a lifetime when I can wear makeup so it makes it difficult but I love it and I'm so pleased to have it okay next up we've got Pat McGrath labs can you believe that Pat McGrath and 
Natasha Denona made it so high up in my list this year. Usually when I buy a Natasha Denona or Pat McGrath product, I'm like, this is so expensive. It's not worth the money. But look, this year, they are worth the money. I really enjoy them. This is the Intensifies Artistry Wand from Pat McGrath. Now, I purchased this thinking, oh, I'll do a review on it because it's different and I want to try it. Um, and then it took like three months to arrive. So, you know, that's really great fun. This is a eye primer and it's a clear eye primer. It's kind of like... It's almost like a glitter glue in a stick, kind of. She's not as sticky as that, but something about this, the way things grip on this, it's magic. It's also a super thin formula and it feels cooling and not like, um, not like minty cooling or anything like that. It feels like if you were to take like, this out of the fridge like you keep it in the fridge and then you put it on it's like that's cold product that's what it feels like i don't know what is doing that i don't really care all i know is i really like this product eyeshadows blend so beautifully over this as well i wasn't sure that this would be good i was a bit like oh i don't know might i might hate this do i really want to spend 50 dollars on it i love it i love it it's fantastic it's one of my favorite, it is my favorite Pat McGrath product. Definitely, it's my favorite Pat McGrath product. I think it's fantastic and I'd buy it again in a heartbeat. I love it. Um, Hourglass, again. <laughs> Did I say that was my last Hourglass product before and I lied? This is, <laughs> sorry, I'm confused. This is the Red Zero lipstick, Ultra Slim Confession lipstick. So, the reason why I love this is I mean, there's many reasons. One, I love Hourglass Ultra Slim Confession lipsticks. They're fantastic. Excuse me while I take my lip product off. So this is quite an innovative lipstick. This is a vegan alternative to Carmine. It mimics the exact shade of Carmine exactly. Now there are obviously red lipsticks on the market that might look like this, that are vegan and cruelty free and all that jazz, but they're probably not an exact dupe. This is an exact replica of the traditional shade of Carmine, but it is made with zero crushed beetles. Um, and I feel like that is quite innovative. I did a whole video on this. I I like Hourglass as a brand. I know that they've not, you know, they've not been great in some aspects of the beauty community um, and they have been good in other aspects of the beauty community. They've been focusing on being like 100% cruelty free and vegan for quite some years now. Um, and it is refreshing to see brands innovating stuff like this. Um, I think they have way, like a way to go with certain things for sure and i hope in the future that they will focus more on those things this lipstick however i think is fantastic it i think it's great to see um i don't look i'm not i don't want to sit here and preach about how amazing this is i'm like i don't just use vegan and cruelty free products i mean i've got natural hair brushes here you, like you guys get it but i i can still look at this and i can appreciate it for what it is um and i think it's good i think it's innovative it's not just like you know oh look at this new packaging for something or like you know or our color story of this eyeshadow palette is innovative no like this is innovation you've taken something that has been used in the beauty industry for like hundreds of years literally and you have created an alternative that no longer requires us to kill bugs which is great um so yeah i i think it, it's a good innovation i like this product i mean i love the color as well it's such a like it's a classic, classic colour, you know, it's just beautiful. I also finally got my red hourglass packaging. 
Finally. Oh, let's talk about some Nars. <laughs> this is the Laguna Sunkiss Bronzing Cream. Guys, I friggin' love this stuff. I love it so much. If they don't make this a permanent product in their range, I'm gonna cry because once this is done, I'm gonna have to find an alternative. And I don't think there's anything on this planet that is quite as good as this beautiful darling baby. I hear the uh, Anastasia Beverly Hills one is quite good. So if you've tried it, maybe let me know. Um, I really do hope that they make this permanent though, because I love it. I love the shade Laguna. Like I just, I know it's a perfect color for me. And the formula of this um, cream bronzer is so beautiful. It's smooth and lovely. It's got really good pigmentation, but it blends really well. I love it. I'm so glad that I managed to get my hands on this because I know it sold out quite quickly in Australia, but I was just like, oh, I was worried it wouldn't even come to Australia, but we got it and I got it and I'm so pleased with it. IBD building gel. This is in spot number two. Um, I, this is just, it's so good. This is like, I can't live without this product basically. Um, Every time I talk about this product, people ask me what alternatives, uh, but they also ask me to do a um, application demo. I have done one before. It's in a video called Just Doing My Nails. That's like one aspect of that video. So it's in there. So how I use this is as an enhancement over a natural nail. So um, prep my nails. And then I put this over a couple of coats of it. It does need to be set under a gel lamp. And uh, that's what has allowed me to grow my nails like this. Some of my nails have broken over the many months um, that I've had my nails this way. And I have rebuilt them with this product. Um, my nails have a tendency to split sort of down here. They get like stress cracks because I do stuff with my hands. I don't, I don't baby my nails at all. Um, so you're like, I'm bound to have breakage. But what I love about this product is I don't get nearly as much breakage as I did prior to using this. I would never, ever, ever in a million years have been able to grow my nails this long without this product because I would have had to just sit in my bedroom and be like we don't move we don't use the hands I would have had to learn how to like use my feet and my mouth to do everything because my nails you would look at them and they would break um so this has really changed my life in that aspect I also really like this stuff for repairing broken nails. If I do get like a stress crack, I typically get them like down here where the nail is just growing out of the, um, the nail bed. And uh, what I'll do is I'll just put a couple of layers of this on and it seals the break. This is super strong and it's all good. My nails are, they're, you know, back on track. So I love this stuff. It's fantastic. I do want to find more brands. I want to try more brands. I'm still on the hunt for a nude in like a good formula. I want the formula of IBD, but with the color of like nudes, nudes and mauves. That is my goal. Okay. The last thing is actually two products that I'm putting together because they're the same product. They're just different scents. It's the pharmacy cleansing balm. Uh, so I have the sweet apple clean here and I have the very cherry. I love these guys. I just love them. Oh yes. Oh my God. The cherry one reminds me of like, um, glass a cherries. I have a bag of them inside. I'm going to go eat them. Oh my God. Yes. And sweet apple. Oh, it makes me think of like toffee apples with like a juicy, crisp apple with like the sweetness of toffee apple. Amazing. This cleansing balm is the best cleansing balm I've ever used in my life. I'm just putting it out there. It, when you scoop it out and you like put it in your hands and you do one of these ones, you know what? Fuck it. 
I've got makeup on my hand. Let's let's do it. Let's do some of it. So you scoop it out. Comes with a little spoon. So just go like this. It turns into an oil almost immediately. And you just give a little zhuzh. Little one of these. Little one of these. Breaks everything down. Broke down those Natasha Denona um, lip liners that will fucking last through the apocalypse which is awesome um the way it breaks down mascara and eyeliner like long wear mascara and eyeliner is just so good i absolutely loathe rubbing around my eyes too much because every day i wake up and i'm like oh, that's another line not really but that's like i'm at that age where it's a genuine concern to me like i need to be careful around this area it's you know delicate but this stuff just breaks down makeup so bloody well and just look at like clean when you rub a little bit of water into this it'll turn into a milk and it emulsifies perfectly clean just absolutely perfectly clean if you were having a lazy moment and you didn't want to then go in with a second cleanser to wash your face i think you'd be fine I'm pretty sure you'd be alright. I think you could get away with that. You're not going to be left with a greasy residue. You're probably going to get about 98% of the makeup off. And your skin is going to be soft and hydrated and smells great. I just love this stuff. I think it's fantastic. And I know, like, I can feel it. I can feel that next year they're going to release more of these. Because they released a three-pack of new scented ones for holiday this year. Like, I... They'll do one of two things. They will either release those three scents in these big full size 100 mil, yeah, 100 mil tubs, or they will just simply release more scented ones, which means I'm just gonna have to start wearing more makeup and removing my makeup more often so I can buy more of the pharmacy balm cleansers because i love them they're so good and i just don't want to miss out on a scent and usually they're limited edition too which i mean thanks a lot pharmacy that's so so mean of you so mean but that product bomb and that's why i buy them guys that is the longest bloody video ever <laughs> it was that's a lot and I am, I am tired. I'm all talked out. Um, I'm going to go. I'm just going to go. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Feel free to leave your comments down below. Tell me what your like best purchase of the year was, worst purchase of the year. Uh, if you've got anything to say about the products in this video, go right ahead. Let me know down in the comments section. Um, but I'm going to wrap it up. I'm not going to waffle on because I'm tired and i got to go. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up and I will see you in the next one. Bye.